Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear students, assalamu alaikum. In the last class, we talked about the use case description, how to create the use cases. And now in this class, we will study about designing the use case diagrams. So let's start with the lecture. So what is a use case diagram? In fact, use case diagram model the models the functionality of a system using actors and use cases. So with the help of a use case diagram, we can define what a user can do with the system. So it describes the functionality. Then use cases are a set of actions, services, and functions that the system needs to perform. In this context, a system is something being developed or operated such as a website. So if I am making a website, and it is providing me different services, diff different functionalities. So I will draw different use case diagrams to describe and to understand the functionality of that particular use case. And then the actors are people or entities operating under defined roles within the system. So for example, we have a system of online classes. So there we have the students, teachers, uh, administration. So every user has got the different roles. So as per role of the actor, as per role of the user, we define the use case diagrams. So why we make the use case diagrams? Use case diagrams are valuable for visualizing the functional requirements of the system. So it shows us what the system will do or what we want our system to do. So that will, that will translate into design choices and development priorities. So after making these use case diagrams, we decide that how we will change those into the design and then how we will implement those diagram design, right? They also help identify any internal or external factor that may influence the system and should be taken into consideration. For example, if we have missed something that we have not identified in the requirement and now when we have uh, designed the use case diagram, we realize that, oh, that is the thing that is going to influence, that is going to uh, play its role in our that particular activity. We add that into our use case diagram and into our requirements. The purpose, it organizes the functional requirements. Number two, models the goals of system actors interactions, right? So we in fact define the particular task performed by the system or the user, right? And we just design those. Number three, gather system requirements and actors. So we gather the requirements, right, and actors, and use case diagrams specify the events of a system and their flows. So how it flow, right? The use case diagram describes that which actor can perform what actions and in, in which sequence. So we have few basic symbols and notations to draw a draw a use case diagram. So the first one is the system boundary. All the use cases come into this boundary. In fact, this describes the system. That is what is going inside the system, what we are going to perform inside the system. So in fact, this square boundary or rectangle uh, shape, in fact, is the system in which we put all the use cases. This is the actor. Actor are the user of a system, right? When one system is the actor of another system label the actor system with the actor stereotype for example sensor camera alarm so that means it is not always a human who is going to interact with the system there can be devices there can be hardware that can deal along with different uh, activities so in order to connect those use cases we connect those with like sensor like camera like alarm anything right so it, this is not only the human who is the user or interacting with the system. There are many other devices or the systems that are interacting with the with our that particular use case system. So this is the diagram of the use case. In fact, we show it with the oval and we write down the name of that functionality. For example, if I say that there is a user that is student and he registers the code. So registers will be the func functionality. It drops a code. So drop will be an activity, right? So we write down that verb inside this uh, use case. So that describes the functionality. Functionality is to be represented as use case. A use case describes how actor uses system to accomplish a particular goal. 
So in fact, this oval is going to describe how one task will be done. So next one is association or relationship. Remember always we link the user or the actor with the use cases with this simple line. This is a very simple line. So we connect those to represent that which user is connected to which use case, right? What functionality he is going to perform. So normally we use this line and along with it we have two different more kind of uh, associations or relationship. One is known is known as include and the other is known as exclude. We will study these two data. Just for the time being, you, you just keep in your mind this only line. There is a simple line that connects the use cases with the use cases and that connects the user with the use case, right? So now check. These are the few simple diagrams. Number one, use case, association, and here we have system boundary. Later on, we will study the generalization, the include, and the x extend, right? So how to draw? First of all, we identify the actor. There is uh, the actor who are going to access that use case, who are going to get that functionality of the system. For each category of users, identify all roles played by the user relevant to the system. You know, one student can play many roles, right? For example, if I say that, we have teachers role right so teacher can have many functionalities in his module in his uh, particular role so we must try to find out all the rules or all the activities in that particular role that he or she is going to perform similarly a student can view the result he can add the code he can drop the code so all these things must be known in advance number three Identify what are the users required the system to be performed to achieve these goals. So, in fact, you must know that, in fact, what is needed, right? So, what we need to implement those use cases so that we may achieve that particular goal. Number four, create use cases for every goal. For example, if I'll have to, I, I'll give you another example. For example, if I want to withdraw money, I should draw a particular uh, use case diagram for withdrawal of money, right? If I am going to transfer, I must have a use case for that. So we draw different uh, use cases for the different goals. Then we, when we have all, we have got all these information, we structure the use case. So we put the uh, labels in the diagram, and now we have got, we have different use cases, and now from all those use cases. We prioritize, we review, we estimate, and we validate that we have drawn the correct use cases or we have got the correct requirement. And we discuss these use cases along with the user. So this is a reading assignment. You will have to discuss the advantages of a use case diagram and disadvantages of a use case diagram, right? So whenever we are going to make use cases, remember one thing we already studied that, in fact, we do not work on all the use cases. Rather, for every iteration, we select the requirements that we will have to implement. And then for those implement those requirements only, we draw the detailed use case diagram so that we must have those use cases clear and we must move towards the design. So, here we have a very simple diagram of an, of an ATM machine. So here is a customer. Customer is an actor, so it is outside the system. This boundary is system. Now, inside the system, there are different use cases, functionalities. So one customer can check balance. He can deposit the funds, withdraw the cash, transfer the funds. A technician can maintain the machine. A technician can repair the machine. And on the back end, we have another that is bank, right? And bank also helps to get the balance checked to get the funds transferred, to get the withdrawal of the cash. So this thing also helps. Use case diagram example of a restaurant. So here, forget about these extend and include. I'll teach you later in the next class, inshallah. So here we have the waiter. Waiter, in fact, is going to provide the food, right? So he will provide the food and then waiter will serve the food, right? Patron, the guest will 
eat the food, right? And then cashier will get the payment for the food and the guest will or the patron will pay for the food. So these are very simple, in fact, use cases and we have not discussed these extent. Inshallah, we will discuss these in next class. So along with these basic structures, what you will have to do is now try to draw a very basic use case diagram for your uh, class project and then submit it in the next class. Thank you very much.